So you're saying their guidelines, that's fair. Well, I thought they were laws because you could break them. So you have open office on here? Uh, I certainly would expect that I do, and I would expect that it works. Okay. Cool. This could be embarrassing again, so. That's cool. If you don't have much battery life, that's definitely not a problem. I, I'm completely comfortable with batteries dying halfway through speeches. Um, <laughs> if anyone saw my uh, DEF CON, uh, last DEF CON speech, uh, the battery died halfway through. It went really well. Um, the outline was like solidified in my own head and I had already thought about it enough where I was comfortable giving the speech anyways. That's why the lack of a slide deck really doesn't terrify me. The fact that I can't hold down water because I drank too much last night, <laughs> that terrifies me. But <laughs> the red doll will help, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Give me my bucket. <laughs> I want it. Did you say It's um, the Canadian Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> I'm just picturing actually. The valiant effort. Go you! I blame myself. Um, oh. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what? That's completely uncalled for. Um, obviously, because there is a strong element of truth to it. So, uh, a brief introduction. Uh, I'm Dead Addict. Um, everything you need to know about me is really none of your business. Um, this is a privacy talk. Um, I have, though, uh, um, uh, given a lot of information about companies I've worked for to um, ver at varying levels of disclosure. Like at presentations, I'll tell you, um, I worked for, uh, say, a, a dominant operating system uh, uh, company in the Pacific Northwest uh, for several years. <laughs> That's right. Um, and I, I worked for a large financial infrastructure uh, uh, company that's uh, uh, one of the um, top five global brand recognition names. Um, not telling you who that is, but you know, in many of these cases, you can figure them all out. Um, in the beginning and consistently, when talking at venues like this, I, I find it uh, um, best for me and my employer um, to not associate with each other. So I don't mention them, they don't like have a problem with me saying whatever I say, and that's, that's all really happy. When, when, I started, when I started speaking at events like this, it was a lot more, uh, there's a lot more at risk, and the idea that a hacker might be in a large corporation um, really put my job at jeopardy. Um, and there was a legitimate reason to be concerned about that. Um, the landscape has changed considerably over the last 15 years. And, and, uh, you know, I told my boss I was going to this, um, and it, he felt hurt that I didn't talk to him about it beforehand, that I wasn't representing the, the company. And I don't know, I, if, if any of you saw me last night, um, <laughs> partying till uh, 5 a.m., really, I don't want to represent them. Um, Depends on the company, which is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Right now, I, I work for a, a large uh, telecommunications hardware manufacturer and a software manufacturer that's uh, uh, also a dominant um, brand in its field in, uh, uh, the, near the Toronto area. Um. <laughs> um. I've chosen this path uh, uh, personally of trying to uh, avoid having public mentions of, of affiliations. Um, and essentially, you know, while we all can figure out all these associations, what you won't necessarily be able to do is put my name or my handle uh, specifically into a search engine and find out uh, any of these specific brands. And, and so composing, uh, Composing a, a, a sketch of who I am, my resume, um, without my permission should be a relatively difficult task. And I, I've essentially 
tried very hard over a long period of time to make that so. But because uh, of interpersonal relationships, obviously I get in a conversation with someone and it's really silly um, for the most part not to talk about your job and what you do and, and compare and contrast experiences. So yeah, every, people in the room have known places I've worked and know various personal details and, and we all do this to some extent when we're, we manage our own privacy by um, uh, deciding the, the level of disclosure that we'll give uh, people when, when we're talking to them. Um, and it's essentially about establishing trust levels. Um, this is interacting with, with people and organizations like your companies uh, that you work for that you have a voluntary association with, um, as opposed to um, the government and uh, vent, like telephone companies and, and people you purchase services that you need. Um, all of those relationships you are not, not really voluntary. Um, you need a cable provider, um, largely, uh, in this day and age. You need bandwidth. You need... Uh, you, you can't, there's not enough room on sea land for all of us to gather there and avoid the government thing, so. <clears throat> yes, yes. Um, in, in regards to who I am, I, I, I definitely want to point out that um, I, I don't believe that uh, establishing credentials really is very meaningful. I think there's a, a lot of people that have very impressive credentials and have very impressive associations who if they got on stage and started, and who are very respected, so they have the respect of other people, um, and they would, if they got on stage and started spouting what they would normally spout, um, all that would be meaningless as far as credibility of their speech, right? So um, Donald Rumsfeld or something comes, Cheney comes to example, right? Um, uh, you can pick your politician villain of choice, but there's lots of people in uh, industry as well. Um, you know, I... I I don't really uh, want to hear technical presentations from uh, certificate authority salesmen because I think that's all bullshit, for example. Um, and essentially, yeah, that, that's a whole other, another speech um, about how certificate authorities are selling uh, uh, trust that really doesn't exist. <coughs> so I want to talk a bit about permanent records. And when I was a kid, I had this, uh, I was instilled, not only about all of you, I was instilled with this idea from early childhood of the permanent record. And it was almost, it was a childhood sort of memory that, from a very early age. And it, it was an attempt to try to uh, have my behavior dictated by the outside forces um, in fear of, of, for the rest of my life, it really so, the rest of my life, my attendance record in high school would follow me. It, was anyone here told this? Was anyone here told that, like, yeah, your future employers for the rest of your life are going to go look at your high school attendance records, so you better friggin' show up? And I don't know, like, your beginning level jobs, your first jobs right out of high school, uh, had, does anyone know of that happening? Does anyone know of a prospective employer going back to the high school and saying, well, what was their attendance records? So, I. The first thing about permanent records, um, for, from my experience, was I was told all these things. I was told that all of my academic, uh, 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 so to speak, in elementary and high school, I don't doesn't really seem academic and didn't to me anyways, um, would follow me for the rest of my life. So that was the idea of permanent records. It's a lie. It was a lie. It was all bullshit. Um, and it was completely fabricated largely to keep us all in check. Um, and, and all of that, it's sort of irrelevant because, you know, it, it'd be nice if I was, I don't know, I, I, I'm not sure I could uh, give that, the same would be true for a group of sixth graders today. Like for all of us that, that went through school, I think that was true in the idea of a permanent record from that age. Um, <laughs> mm, the, the academic benefit that high school gave me was the illicit reading I did during class when I should have been paying attention. And um, a couple semesters of typing were, were really quite useful. <laughs> so for us, um, I, I think, yeah, we can forget about that as a permanent record, but the idea of a permanent record 
is, is very real, um, and it's very, very terrifying, and, and we all have to be aware of it. Um, and it's something that hasn't existed in the past. Our, our, our parents, our grandparents, um, they didn't have this, and what they had is a reputation systems that were ge geographically based. So if you were known as a bad person, you could go to another town. No problem, you start over and you're the new person and you have to rebuild webs of trust and whatnot, but, but that's okay. Um, you could, there was no such thing as uh, permanent records for social activities. Uh, right now, our social interactions uh, in an online context are permanent records. Things we say in forums, things we post, drunken rants at 4 a.m., uh, arguments we get in, flame wars, all of these things, all of these, uh, all of these pieces are, are, are permanently archived. Um, and it's, unfortunately, I, I, I think from a um, from risk assessment, one should think of this as all being uh, permanently archived. It, it'd really be nice if we could count on it for archival purposes. <laughs> like, could I get all this stuff back that I said? That'd be really useful. But for archival purposes, all, um, all service providers are flaky and, and you shouldn't count on any of the companies to survive. Um, the, the other, an, another kind of permanent record which is even less fortunate than everything that you might have said in any context or uttered in any context um, is what other people have said about you. So there's, and which you have no control of largely. Uh, and furthermore, if you uh, protest and if, if it bothers you and you start engaging someone that says bad things about you, you actually start to create a larger record. That record expands of, of that conflict uh, as opposed to someone just saying the shitty thing. If, if you want to deal with that, then, then that grows, that presence of, of information grows larger. Um, so the use of a handle um, or pseudonyms is, is, is very useful, obviously. But one thing I think people assume when they use pseudonyms is that that will stay that way. That, okay, I'm making up a handle, I'm using it in this context, and that will not be associated with my real name. But if you build up a reputation, and if you stay active in a community, if you are uh, interacting long enough in that community, um, it's difficult to, to discard that, uh, that handle. And then at any point in time, anyone you've interacted with that knows who you really are can easily kill that handle entirely, can kill the anonymity. And what happens with that is all these things that you've been saying in a context where you, you feel free um, of repercussions, of it not impacting other parts of your life. <coughs> Anyone at any time can uh, reconnect uh, uh, various identities and destroy the, the separation uh, that you've tried to build up. Um, court records, um, like there's all transactional records uh, of interactions with either bureaucracies or uh, corporations are, are other permanent records. Um, this is, is disconcerting for two reasons, or for a couple of reasons. One, um, if you look at every economic interaction you have with the outside world, you can gain a potentially better insight into the person the person has on themselves. Um, and I think this is true for a large portion uh, of people online, um, partially because of a lack of introspection, I, I would imagine but also because there's frightening accuracy. Uh, never, anyone that used Amazon for, for any amount of time uh, can tell. Um, and it's not 100%, but um, essentially marketers, what they want to do is model the human mind so they can uh, uh, hack it, right? That, that's what they do. So they know who you are, then they try to um, create a message that will get you to want their products and whatnot. Um, so they're building up permanent records on everyone. They don't really, while they can invade a person's privacy to a, a frightening degree, the economic perspective on it isn't really that concerning. They just, they just want to sell to you. So it's, it's not any more malicious than that. 
uh, it can get problematic when uh, commercial interests who've been building up uh, a detailed uh, view on people for economic reasons interacts with the law enforcement uh, or the government who, who has uh, uh, other potential interests. Um, and and these the, the commercial data sellers are uh, consistently willing to deal with law enforcement agents and uh, be good patriots. Um, No, I, I don't think the, the, the uh, I mean, in the case, in the case of uh, um, the um, uh, telephone companies, for example, the, the fear there is uh, that they are outright breaking the law completely, right? And, and the accuracy of information is um, really, I mean, the credit bureaus um, and accuracy is another point that's uh, uh, important about the commercial databases uh, that are created. The accuracy is horrendous, uh, and it's being resold and repropagated. So um, not only are these permanent records existing about everyone, uh, they're oftentimes uh, wrong. And if you look at, uh, is there a single error about the records about you, in, in some sense, everyone's permanent records are, are wrong. So these, there's all this information sets out there um, that are built upon, uh, about us all that are incorrect. Um, and people will base their decisions, their credit granting decisions, um, whether or not to bust down your house and serve a warrant uh, because your name was the same as, as someone else that had a warrant, um, deny you entry to a plane. Um, that accuracy has real world ramifications. Um, I'm not gonna talk about at all about how to um, make those records accurate. <laughs> There's methods. You can work really hard and, and try to run around correcting all this information about yourself. Um, and, and there are those uh, people that have a passion to privacy that are willing to vote time and interest that I'm certainly not willing to devote. Um, of course, I'll talk about Facebook a little bit. Facebook. Um, is, is what I call the sort of a self-destruction of privacy. You know, I talk about the commercial entities doing all this various thing. This is all outside of our control. This, uh, not entirely, but and it, it's happening to everyone, and it's not very opt-in, I guess, is the, the way I would say. It's, all of that is an opt-out, and if you want to not play in, in those games, you have to protect your privacy on your own. But things like Facebook, that's very much, hey, I want to play this game. I want to interact with all these friends and do all these things and leave all of these trails about my activity, uh, my moods and, and things that are going on. Um, and I remember the first time I saw one of these, uh, saw one of these sites, and it wasn't Facebook. Facebook's, you know, a number of years after the first social networking sites. And I couldn't, I honestly thought the first social networking site that came up, that that was a, a uh, a CIA uh, operation. Uh, it just seemed really logical. I'm like, oh, wow, of course you want all this information. Which one is that? Which one was the first one? I, I don't recall. Oh. Friends for was it? Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, but, and, and, I, and I knew people that, that joined up to these, but I mean, essentially what the intelligence agencies want to do is they want to map relationships and they want to know who knows who and what kind of interactions and what kind of relations, uh, relationships are uh, between different people and entities. And that's how they kind of gain their intelligence on, on the groups they're interested in, entities they're interested in. And um, this would all be completely benign, but of course the intelligence uh, community in, in this country, as well as every other country, uh, has, has a history of uh, acting against its, its own citizens and, and uh, uh, having political agendas uh, in their uh, pursuits of national security. Um, so, yeah, I, I really believe Facebook is, is, is a wet dream of the CIA, and all of these networks are, and I largely don't think there's a way to win with privacy and participate in any of these networks. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I, I don't have any answers in this talk. I have a, a, some different approaches and, and different ideas. Um, my, my general stance on leaving my own footprints in the electronic world is to try to avoid leaving any at all. And I, um, I'm completely anti-social online, uh, by and large. Um, 
social interactions, when done, are done by uh, email on a person-to-person -person basis or on very small um, uh, private mailing lists. That doesn't scale. No, it doesn't scale. No, no. Yeah, I don't actively participate in online communities. I don't. And I haven't for years and years and years. And a, a, a large reason of that, uh, a big reason uh, that's the case is because I've been concerned about um, how, how one would be able to reconstruct the digital fingerprints over a, a lifetime. I'm not interested in, uh, in people being able to, to, uh, to have this insight unless I design and decide to give it to them. Um, I'm not saying it's, it's not an approach for everyone. Um, and it's a, a rather drastic uh, approach. Um, luckily, uh, while I am a lurker, so I see what goes on in communities, and um, for the most part, um, um, I don't regret my decision to, to not participate in them. Um, the communities that are worth being in generally have people that can articulate the positions that I have very clearly and do when relevant. Um, and and I'm, I'm really happy that's the case. Um, so, managing identities. Um, what's an identity? Um, we don't have single identities, I don't think, I propose. I propose that we have a lot of identities um, that we use in different contexts. Um, so we have our home life and, and the people we live with and our household and, and how we interact with them. And you know, it's, it's often said you don't know someone until you've lived with them. Um, and I think that that's absolutely true. Um, people have a, an academic or a school um, kind of demeanor and per persona and how they interact in that context. Um, people have sporting interests. Um, uh, it's, you, it's funny because it just sounds like things you would do in life. But in reality, when you're out bowling with the guys uh, and you're drinking and having social interactions within that context, you will talk about things and you will say things uh, in which you would not necessarily want all of the other aspects of your life to know about. The, the conversations aren't appropriate for those contexts. Your drinking conversation, bowling, I don't bowl, by the way. <laughs> um, um, they, they're not appropriate for your work colleagues, or, or more specifically, your, your prospective employers um, to know. And, and maybe that doesn't make sense. How could your, your chatting with your bowling buddies, uh, uh, your future prospective, have, have anything to do with that? But it, I'm sure, um, how many here hire, have hiring power, have had hiring power at organizations? How many people have used uh, Google uh, on perspective? Uh... How many countries was that illegal? <laughs> I don't know. I've never been advised uh, not to do that. In Holland, it's illegal. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I do too. I, I use Google on employee, perspective employees. And I'm probably more diligent than other people. I have relative, reasonable, good Google skills. And I've certainly, I, I had a, a question about hiring someone uh, because on his uh, first name, last name, dot com uh, blog, he chatted about his uh, drug use uh, in like last night or whatever. And it, it wasn't a question of, I don't want someone in the organization to use his drugs. I use his particular drug, too. Um, but I, I did have a question about uh, hiring someone with the judgment to have that on their first name, last name, dot com blog. Or, and I want employees with good judgment. I didn't bring this up in the hiring process, but I, I sort of uh, everyone had a veto uh, vote. Um, but I certainly considered it. Now. I have reasonable Google skills, and first name dot, last name dot com is not ninja Google skills, but um, the difficulty now of acquiring this information about uh, an arbitrary individual um, versus the difficulty of compiling a very complete dossier on an arbitrary individual, say five or ten years in the future, is going to be really dramatic. 
I believe in five or ten years we're going to be able to, uh, you won't need any particular skills and it will be in, uh, ridiculously easy to uh, create a, um, uh, a complete picture of people's digital trail online and reassemble uh, different contexts in which they spoke uh, and, and, and had conversation. So in reality, the prospective employer will have the ability to see the uh, uh, conversation you had with your bowling buddies because your interactions are largely virtual. Um, but won't it level the playing field then? If, I mean, if every, if every potential president has had like whatever people you slept with and naked pictures online, then it's all fine, right? It's not going to be used against you anymore because every candidate will have those pictures online. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> well, I, I see. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to have the the one sick fuck that has nothing interesting in their background rise to leadership, right? <laughs> but I mean, uh, like George Bush's uh, cocaine use didn't like prevent him from getting presidency. He, Disney used to fire anyone that even came close to, like, you know, pornography. And now they just have, like, we don't care, it's her own private mistake. So even Disney, you can see already, moved much more to the, we don't really care what you do in your personal life and what's leaked out on the internet. Right. So you're, you're absolutely right about, uh, uh, and I believe there's a, a, a more and more liberal uh, hiring practices. And like I said, what, uh, 15 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to, well, I'm not sure if I have said this, actually. 15 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to uh, uh, be hired at, um, at a company with, um, with my handle, with my background as a hacker. They would, companies seven years ago uh, consistently said, we don't hire hackers, which was a bald-faced lie and absurd, and I think they're just kind of mum and, and don't answer that question anymore. Um, now, 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 I, I think they construe it. Uh, they can construe the question to be convicted hackers, um, and that might be the case, which I think is a legal liability thing more than any uh, anything else. No, but our, our danger, um, in my mind, of uh, of our privacy violations is uh, what was said in uh, Seinfeld is a collisions of worlds. And the, the real impact to our privacy is our own social interactions, having these, these, these pieces of information from one social context bleed into another social context. Um, and I, I don't know if anyone here uh, has used and uses live journal consistently. Um, <laughs> So um, the interesting thing about live journal is that there's filtering, right? You're like, well, I want to create this filter, and so I want this this group of people to know this amount of things about about me. And you know, maybe uh, lots of times it's very benign. Well, my sewing stuff is very interest, you know, very boring, and no one wants to hear about that. But other times it might be personal. You know, it might be while well, I'm involved with this sort of uh, help, self help group or this uh, sexual interest or this deviant religion. Um, right. Um, so, the interesting thing about live journal filters, though, is that if various folks are all on your live journal, they don't know which filters they're in and out of necessarily. And and I've seen this happen on multiple occasions. Very easily, uh, easy for it to happen is inadvertent breaches of information disclosure protocol, or one friend says to another friend, hey, I heard about that thing that you posted the other day, and they weren't supposed to know that. Um, and it, it can cause social impact. And I think the, the, the idea of secrecy um, uh, and privacy really go very closely. Um, one solution that, from a, a personal perspective, is to try not to have um, secrets at all or to try not to um, or minimize um, the secrets you have and specifically tell people. Um, you know, if you have a secret, then it should be your secret. And if you post it to a small group of people in an online forum, it certainly isn't a secret in any real context, I would propose. Um, when, when Russian mafia owns your secrets, they're not your secrets. 
Um, yeah, the, the other, uh, um, talking about future uh, employers, um, I, I, uh, can I have a show of hands of how many people here have Googled a prospective partner or a prospective significant other before pursuing a... <laughs> <laughs> it's reasonable. I mean, you know, when I talk about Googling a prospective employee to protect the organization, if you're not protecting yourself against, you know, um, you don't know, it would, it would be idiotic. You know, if your friend said, hey, I Googled your, the person you're dating and they're wanted for murder in the next state over, and you'd be like, shit, I should have Googled them. <laughs> More likely the case, though, you Google the person and it's not that they're a murderer, it's just that they're a dick online. <laughs> which might be indicative of how they're going to be in real life. See, again, not leaving any digital trails directly myself, you have to get to know me to learn that I'm a dick. So, I think um, managing identities, and the idea of managing identities is, is almost instinctual for hackers, um, largely because um, certainly when I, uh, first became involved in hacking, there wasn't much so-called, there wasn't much legal hacking. There weren't uh, Unix systems for us to get on Explore because we didn't have the hardware to be able to connect to them or use them and there wasn't a legitimate way to access these resources to, to explore. So we were all breaking the law. Uh, and we're all criminals. And instinctually, if you run around online saying, hi, my name is first name, last name, while you're engaged in breaking the law left and right, um, it, it doesn't matter how clueless the cops were 15 years ago, they would have appreciated that help. <laughs> so, but it's funny, so the, the people have different ways of managing their identities. You know, people, um, there's still people at, at hacker conferences that use their um, use their handles. Myself, uh, uh, I'm, I'm one of them. Um, but I spoke at Black Hat under my, my real first name, middle initial. <laughs> um, others embrace openness uh, in their interactions. And I think that's a, a reasonable strategy as well. Um, leaving no trails and not, and, and versus um, being completely open and not caring at all. And my friend that uh, got hired on, that was at a large uh, financial infrastructure company that uh, my pothead friend got hired, right? Um, he had the, the first name, last name, and his whole, his whole philosophy and viewpoint was, look, this is who I am. You can judge me for what it is. I don't give a fuck, and I'll do what I want to do. And people may or may not have judged him, but I, I, I applaud the approach, and I think it's, it's a, a useful uh, approach, and, and it takes a certain amount, a certain kind of personality type to, to be willing to face everyone's uh, uh, um, judgment, uh, as it were, um, and to be open with yourself online. Um, it's not my approach. <laughs> but I think one of the, it, it's a riskier approach or an approach you have to manage very carefully when you're trying to filter selective in pieces of information from group, various groups of people. Um, you know, if, if, for example, if you um, are a drug user, don't ever fucking talk about it online. Don't blog about it, don't have pictures about it, don't say word one about it. Like, I you know, is there a need for a community online where you need to bond about your liking the same kind of drug? Um, unless it's like a legal drug, don't do it. Um, and I think that's, that's a way to help uh, worlds uh, colliding too. If you put everything that you contribute to the online world with the idea that anyone will always be able to see it, even though you're trying to compartmentalize it in a certain way now, um, that, that will really serve you. How are we doing for time? Okay. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Um, one interesting uh, change was putting, and I, this was a, a changing point for me in 
merging identities. And that's what's slowly happened over a number of years from my professional identity and my hacker identity. Um, as I do more and more security things in a professional context, it makes sense that my contributions to this world apply there and vice versa. Um, and I, I remember putting the hacker cons on my resume. And it was a really, really strange, strange moment. Um, and it's like they all appeared there once, and there were like years of them, and like speaking, and like all sorts of silliness. Uh, and it felt really weird to me. Um, it, it felt like I was giving a, a prospective employer information that I didn't necessarily want to give them. Um, but in truth, it's really relevant to the work I would be doing. Um, I showed expertise, or I showed knowledge in this area here. Um, and I, I will in the workplace as well. Um, I think for the most part, um, when people think about the threats to their privacy uh, or, or think about managing their privacy and their, and their various identity, um, the thing to discard as a threat is, for the most part um, with, with the exception of admitting to illegal activities online. Um, I, I wouldn't advise doing that generally. Um, the government is not a threat to your privacy, really. Like I, they, 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 they are in many contexts, and, and I, I think fights uh, against uh, RFID chips and uh, against unified databases and against government spying, uh, I, I think that as far as the, the freedom and security, uh, the freedom of this country, the government is a threat uh, that needs to be uh, addressed, that we need to fight for our liberties. But on an individual scale, um, they're not really. Um, you happen to be one of the people they target. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> then it all changes. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's funny you should mention that. I. Uh, um, I, I was on a, and this was, I was 18 years old ago. So this is way before the stat, past the statute of limitations. Um, I was on the phone with a, a, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Mind Rape. Uh, a very applicable handle, too. I don't know if you have, any of you know or uh, Mind Rape, but very applicable handle. Um, and he's calling me up, and he's ranting uh, about how they're out to get him. They're like, they're following me, they're listening to my phone calls. And eventually, I happened to be at my computer, and I was, it was so amusing that I was transcribing his paranoid rant. Because <laughs> um, that's exactly what I saw. It. I saw, that, and I, I, I thought that his, his feelings of, uh, um, of persecution were, were really based out of arrogance and whatnot. So the next day, he was busted. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm not exactly sure. Some telco fraud? Actually, no. I think I do know. Um, he was busted for um, uh, using uh, telephone calling card fraud, uh, like using some 800 number and then, and then a dialing out from there. The interesting thing is, though, he wrote a tool that mapped who owned all the 800 numbers. Um, and it, you just import a database and put a little UI on it, whatever, big, big friggin' deal. But the, the number he was abusing was a company that was local to him. So if he'd used his own tool and saw what company he was abusing, he would have said, probably, wow, I want to abuse a company a few states down as opposed to one that can call the local sheriff's department and, and have the wrath of God on me. We were living, I don't know if any of you know uh, uh, Gail Thackeray or who she is, but we were living in her jurisdiction at the time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. And so was your phone in prepaid phone? <laughs> No, no, no. That that was that was my landline. That was my landline. This was this was like ninety one or so. I don't know what prepaid cell phone universe you were living in there in the Netherlands in ninety one. But um, does anyone have any questions? Any uh, thoughts them, themselves? Uh, does anyone have any ideas on how you would manage or, or attempt to? Well, you, you mentioned our thing. Right. You, went, you mentioned ARFID and its prevalence in monitoring and whatnot. What do you think about ARFID viruses? Mm. Well, I mean, I, 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 first of all, I don't think there is a prevalence of devices. I think, I think there's uh, serious plans that have um, large infrastructure behind them to make this so. 
Um, but we'll be a couple generations sure. before kinks are worked out and anything meaningfully scary is in place. Um, but, but the momentum is there to get there. Um, and I think whatever infrastructure uh, uh, is rolled out where there's ubiquitous, say, computers, uh, smart cards, uh, for example, uh, rolled out to entire populations, attacks on those will be done. And um, I, I don't think the attacks to, to, to um, technically disrupt those systems will be enough because um, they'll just use their resources to create better systems and learn from those attacks generally. I think if we want to actually have any chance of um, dismantling such infrastructure that we have to do so at a political level and we have to make sure that we, the people that get elected and the people that uh, we're paying with our tax dollars uh, will say no to that. Um, and I, I think to some degree, having articulate uh, uh, people that can articulate the technical issues and the technical risks associated uh, with these systems uh, have a, a, a good chance of, of delaying uh, or, or disrupting the implementation of them. And I think looking at electronic voting system is an excellent example of how, uh, um, uh, how political action can uh, change the, 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 the problems in the, the electronic systems that are impacting our democracy. Um, yeah. uh, it seems to me like every day, like every time I want to do business with a certain website, they want you to sign up and make a user account. How do you feel about that? Um, I, if, if they're not getting my credit card, no company gets any information that resembles any kind of reality, is how I deal with that. My, my, commercial inter my interactions with the commercial entities, if, if I'm not doing a financial transaction with them, they're never getting anything of any real information from me. Um, sometimes when they demand an email address, I give them uh, um, an email address I, I like to give is sales at their <laughs> <laughs> There, there is Bug Me Not, yeah, and I use Bug Me Not, um, and, and that's an excellent resource uh, uh, to use as well. And, and when I have financial interactions with the companies, I, I generally just get over it. Um, uh, the companies I deal with, I, I try not to have them in a position where their business model is reselling my information. Um, and, uh, you know, not many people can find me. Um, I'm, I'm a rather difficult person to, to locate. Huh? That's the phone company's business model. I mean, the business model of entities you have, the, the electric company, whoever they are, right. the business model of entities you have no choice but to deal with. Right. Well, well, I would hope the electric company is a utility that's somewhat regulated and somewhat uh, doing reasonable. And those are government regulated institutions. So there's the, the telephone companies. Um, as I mentioned, I, I, I um, work near the telecom industry. Um, and, and for reasons like this, uh, I don't like to publicly disclose my exact uh, uh, employer, but I will say the telephone companies are fucking thieves. <laughs> and uh, when I was breaking the law, like many past the statute of limitations ago, I, I regret not stealing more money from those fucking thieves. <laughs> A question here. Yeah. How do you not become that person people are looking for? Well, one, one interesting thing, I'll, 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 uh, one thing I, I, I will mention about my approach and a, a potential fatal flaw in my approach in trying to, to, to stay relatively invisible um, is that I would imagine if you look at anomalies uh, of data, right, uh, my data, while there isn't many, much of it is very anomalous. Right, because there's just sparse pieces of it and different locations I've been, but without uh, full contact with the infrastructure that you would normally engage. Um, so it looks really strange. So all of that work to become relatively anonymous um, is completely gone out the window, um, potentially, um, for the efforts of doing so. Yeah. Are all your utilities gas, electric, water, uh, and are all of your utilities gas, electric, water, and uh, internet? cable, et cetera, uh, in a name other than yours? Um, no, no, I'm the, it, I live in an all-inclusive place, but not for my bandwidth. My bandwidth is my, in my name. My bandwidth is associated with me. Um, 
And luckily, I'm, I'm not in the uh, jurisdiction of the United States uh, uh, at the moment. I'm, I'm residing in Canada. So. Um, now you've given away your identity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I really think I would love freedom. I just have yet to meet him. Okay, so and, and, and you can heckle much better than that, Shardy. <laughs> so here's my real question. Uh, if you're not going to make a Facebook page for yourself, can I do it for you? <laughs> no, no, it's a, it's a serious question. If you take every effort to scrub yourself from the internet, right. What happens when an asshole like me comes along, right. puts up a picture of you, and goes, "Hey guys, I'm dead addict. What's up? Uh, what do you do in that situation?" Well, if you had more assets, I would be more happy. I think is how that works. I'm not sure. Uh, Facebook pages don't have much content, so oh, it's suable assets. Oh, suable. Yeah. <laughs> but how would you be able to, by by taking action against it, you're you're playing your cards. You're Right. And that's exactly what you're right. Trying to right. Well, one thing, like I mentioned, I don't, I don't, I don't engage in uh, social interactions online. Uh, I don't engage in social uh, communities online. So I really have no protection to deal with there. So what, what, what happens? I come to a con and people think I'm a dick or want to point at pictures they print out about me online. Like, wow. Well, it's, more your, it's more your future employer. Right? Right, right. In which case, uh, that handle being made fun of uh, um, won't won't bother me as much. Um, right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, privacy advocates like to push PGP, and, <laughs> right? But 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 isn't it isn't it the worst thing you could possibly do is having people sign your key and being in a key server? I mean, um, it's, it's, it's a, it's you know a permanent what? record. You can't, you can't delete things that, from key servers. That and is it's such a theoretical question. Um, I think PGP ceased to be used about 10 years ago entirely. There's no, 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 that's not entirely true. I guess technically, I, I apologize to John Callis if he's still at PGP, uh, a very nice human being. Um, I, I wish them all, all well. But PGP in its original implementation, I think, was completely uh, unusable. I meant in the broader scope. Oh, right. In the, PGP and its um, so are, are you talking about webs of trust, uh, crypt cryptographic webs of trust and maintaining anonymity? Specifically, the open PGP where people sign your keys, you, and those keys are available to a key server if you so disclose. Right. But once you do disclose them, right. or someone else discloses it for you, the thing is, it's, it's there forever. You're, it, it gets worse because uh, without knowing you, I can sign your key and then your identity is suddenly Yeah, I. <laughs> how does one deal? Like, how does one deal with such, you know, like? Well, I. Yeah, and I and I think I think uh, um, uh, confirmed identities is the, is the other thing, right? Um, essentially, regardless of what PKI you're using, the there's an idea of um, authenticating who you are, and the moment you're authenticated, then your utterances are uh, less deniable even, and potentially legally binding. Um, and if I, if I was going to avoid general uh, electronic fingerprints um, uh, as a whole, I'll try even harder to avoid uh, cryptographically secure digital fingerprints that are non-deniable. OK. Um, um, it's me. Uh, I assume you've heard of Rapleaf. Do you really think that there'll be a larger business model for people who are aggregates of taking other people's information and selling it for uh, gain? Do you think we'll see more and more companies that are doing that in the near future? Yeah, I, I uh, mentioned before that I, I thought that there would be a, a completely terrifying, uh, easy way to, to look at someone's identity. Uh, Rapleaf.com is an excellent example of a third party uh, trying to aggregate your digital fingerprints into a single profile. Um, and, and they're only the beginning of a trend that will inevitably continue. And it, I, don't, I don't even think it has to be profitable. If it's just techni technically feasible to do so, people will retry their economic business models in reconstructing such uh, aggregate uh, information. Uh, um, no, there's nothing we can do about it, I don't think. Um, potentially, uh, I don't know, 
I, I don't like to say legislation is, is a cure because I always get terrified when lawmakers uh, get together and write new laws. Um, even if I, uh, they had good intentions in the beginning, what comes out is terrifying new stuff from lawyers. All right, uh, one more question, we'll go. You say uh, you can correct your information if you put effort into it. I mean, the companies obviously want to accept your information that is correct right. and shared. So why not correct it with information that bears little to no resemblance to the real world? Like, uh, hi, my new name is, you know, I think Bob Foonley. <laughs> I mean, I think there could be legal ramifications to falsely uh, presenting information to, to, to various entities. Um, I, I, I'm not sure the, oh, I'm not sure the idea is to, that, that's an approach. Yeah, I, I think that's good. I, I, I think I talked about various approaches, and I think creating noise in the system is another approach. Um, one last thought I want to leave you with before I go is uh, the beauty of names that your mother gave you or your father gave you. And uh, if you have a, uh, what I call a good or lucky name, you will be completely anonymous through um, hundreds of thousands of other people or thousands of other people having those names and having their own identities they're managing online. And it'll be very, very difficult to clearly identify a single person uh, if you're doing a, a casual analysis of, of that identity. So um, y'all are lucky. Um, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. I'll be around.